On this episode of Simply, it's ice cream season, and we've got the scoop. Then we'll keep things moving with a trip to Food Truck Fridays. We get an inside look at all the biggest shows coming to PPAC this season. Then we'll ride the historic coastal rails in Portsmouth. And Chef Nick is on a roll with this New England favorite. Simply is brought to you by Cranston's Wines and More and Dr. Eric George and Associates. Hey folks, I'm Becky Gibble and this is Simply. It's July and my co-host Henry Winkler and I are at Rocky Point State Park to celebrate all things summer. It's gonna be a big show. We're winding up and cooling down. Stick around. Hey folks, first up, we head to Clementine's in Middletown, Rhode Island for some delicious homemade ice cream. Perfect before or after Easton Beach. Let's get the scoop. Hi, I'm Warren Sternberg and we're at Clementine's in Middletown, Rhode Island. My wife and I started Clementine's six years ago in East Greenwich. We have two locations, so one in East Greenwich and one here on Wave Ave. It's all really, really fresh. Usually what you're eating is uh, one to two days old. So we turn it over really quickly. 22 flavors here, about 32 in East Greenwich. So cookie dough is the all time most popular. So probably two to one over anything else. Uh, mint Oreo is a really popular flavor. Coffee heat bar, chocolate brownie is very popular. Yeah, we kind of stick to the basics and do that, uh, or try to do that really well. So we have a big ice cream batch freezer is what it's called essentially. So it makes ice cream in five gallon batches. Any of the, the bases go right in the machine. So we'll, the black raspberry goes right in there, that puree, strawberries go right in the machine. It chills it down in about 10 to 15 minutes and it comes out of that machine as a thick soft serve. So from that thick soft serve, we'll do any add-ins like cookie dough, brownie dough. We mix those in as it's coming out of the machine we're able to control how things are, are hand mixed in and, and really load up on those mix-ins. It's a little more of an art, I guess, to, to add in the flavors by hand, some of the mix-ins by hand. From there, it goes in a deep freezer, which chills it down very, very quickly. And that's the key to getting creamy ice cream is to chill it down as quickly as possible. It feels really good and it's really neat to see how it's come together. And that, that's been one of the best things is coming in on a busy night and, and really seeing a lot of smiling, happy faces. And, and that's what excites us in growing the business as well. That's kind of, I guess, would be our mission statement is to have everyone leave Clementines with a smile. Next up, we head to Portsmouth, Rhode Island to revisit a fan favorite, Rail Explorers. There's no better way to pedal along the coastline. Come on. Rail Explorers is an eco-tourism company that have developed a beautiful steel rail bike that goes on the railroad tracks. Back in 2012, uh, we were living in Brooklyn, doing the whole sort of Brooklyn life, and my escape was Korean dramas. And one night, I, I was watching my drama, and it had this couple, and they were riding off onto the sunset on this contraption that I had no idea what it was, but on the rails, and they were peddling. I raced upstairs and said to my husband, I found what we're doing for the rest of our lives. I, I found our next life, you know. And he's like, what? And he's like, I show it to him, and he's like, Fabulous, let's do it. It took about three years from that moment until our first division was open in the Adirondacks. In Rhode Island, our division is on Aquidneck Island and you're in Portsmouth. And you're going along the Narragansett Bay, which is really beautiful. And you get to see the water, you get to see some wildlife, you get to see a lot of the local habitat, so it's beautiful. You rode on what we call the Southern Circuit. It's a six mile round trip and stopped at a beautiful picnic area that's right on the Narragansett Bay that used to be part of the old Colony Railroad, which was built in 1864. So these tracks, you know, like 160 years old. 
you've got open space all around you, you know, there's no windows or doors holding you in and you're so low to the ground that you can feel the history, you feel the nature and the atmosphere all around you. It's really quite beautiful. We also have the Northern Ramble, which goes six miles north from where we are now. And then in the afternoons and evenings, we have specialty tours. I mean, we're really passionate in all locations, um, no matter if they're hilly or flat, to make them accessible for all ages and all abilities. So we go to great trouble to do that. We get a lot of multi-generational families that visit, and often grandparents, grandkids are together. I would say it's fabulous for private parties, birthdays, bachelorettes, any, any occasion. You can bring your own picnics, bring your own food, bring your own drinks. So I would encourage anyone who has friends or family that want to create new memories to come and visit one of our Rail Explorer locations. Chill out, y'all. We'll be right back. Hey folks, welcome back. If you're anything like me, summer is all about working on your tan and your spare tire. So next up, we head to Carousel Village in Roger Williams Park to check out Food Truck Fridays. There's truly something for everyone. Let's check it out. My name is Neil Vecarelli and we are at Food Truck Friday. So we have 17 food trucks here tonight, along with a uh, beer and wine vendor, uh, local beer, and we have live music, and it's our weekly tradition of getting the community out to uh, enjoy each other's company and support local business and have a great, safe outdoor time. It's just an awesome social event. It is a great place to people watch, to get great food. My wife and I and a group of us have been coming. This is the eighth year. This is the eighth year of the event. We're every Friday, this is our summer every Friday night. From April through September at five o'clock on Friday night, this is Food Truck Friday. This is our flagship event that we do every single Friday here in the park at Carousel Village with our partners, Roger Williams Park Zoo and Carousel. And we've enjoyed just the atmosphere, obviously the food, the different types of food, the music. Just, just the entire atmosphere is just excellent. You see all the different types of trucks that are here. There's, there's something to please everyone's taste. My son's favorite truck is Championship Melt. He loves this Stan Hansen's. It's absolutely amazing, Ashley. I like to try every single truck while I'm here. Today it was a basil and bunny, and the burger was excellent. One of the things that's really amazing about Food Truck Friday is how resilient our food trucks are and how resilient our food truck fanatics are. Tonight was one of those nights where really out of nowhere we got a burst of a rainstorm for about 18 minutes. So the rain stopped and within five minutes the lines were back. It's like people crawled back out of their cars or from under the trees and they're back in line and they're supporting all these small businesses. It's one of the really cool things about the community that we've built here. Everybody's friendly. It's always been a great atmosphere. I think what we've been able to capture is we've been able to use social media and technology to reproduce the old town square experience where people used to come out you know, and, and meet their neighbors so that people can actually come out and have that old fashioned community experience and we're using technology to help bring it to them. Oh, they have to come. I'm missing out on some great food. Bring a chair and enjoy the nice weather. You can just listen to live music and you'll eat excellent food. That's just a great time. Bright lights, big city without the commute. PPAC is kicking off its simply the best season with Broadway hits never before seen in New England. World-class entertainment in the heart of the ocean state? What could be better? Let's check it out. What we now know as the Providence Performing Arts Center originally opened in October of 1928. It was opened as a movie palace. It was a Lowe's theater. It was designed by George and C.W. Rapp and was considered very opulent, state-of-the-art, art deco, a beautiful place to see newsreels and movies. So it was very, very special. So we feel like we've got a beautiful historic venue and yet we're bringing the most popular contemporary shows available to book today. So it's kind of the best of all worlds. 
We are so excited about this season and we named it simply the best in homage to our national tour launch of Tina, the Tina Turner musical. This tells the story about Tina's life, all the obstacles she has to overcome, and how she basically surmounted everything and became known as the queen of rock and roll. So if you love Tina Turner's songs and music. This will be a rollicking, fantastic show. It's a story about Tina and also the triumph of Tina. So after Tina, we have Mean Girls coming up October 4th through the 9th. You can't sit with us. As everyone knows, Mean Girls was based on a very popular movie and a lot of fun, a lot of excitement. You know, see what goes on with teenage girls during their high school years. And on Wednesday, October 5th, we have our Bank Newport Family Night. That's a special opportunity for families to come and see the show together. We have a buy one, get one free offer. So that's especially for that night. But I hear that it's a lot of fun and it promises to be fetch. Whatever, I'm getting cheese fries. Following that in October, we have Tootsie. Again, if you want to have a rollicking good time, this show is hilarious. A lot of fun. Again, many people know it from the movie. And the stage adaptation is just a riot. So that's a lot of fun. Divorced. Beheaded. Died. Died. Six was nominated for eight Tony Awards, including Best Musical, and it did win a couple of Tony Awards. That show is gonna be here in April for two weeks. It's considered a very exciting, groundbreaking show. It's about the six wives of Henry VIII. Listen up, let me tell you a story. Welcome to the show, to the history. The show is about 90 minutes and a lot of dancing, fabulous costumes, and very dynamic, very modern show. So it's telling a historical story in a very modern, exciting way. Nothing has the excitement and the energy of live theater. You're in the moment, you're of the moment, and you're actually a part of it. So that creates a very special experience and a special memory. Anyone who would like to join us as part of our subscriber family is asked to call our box office at 401-421-ARTS. For individual tickets, you can go on our website at ppacri.org, can order online, and also order at the box office um, by phone or at the window as well. Henry? Henry, come! Oh, he did. Good boy. <laughs> Y'all stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs> well, summer is my favorite time in New England. I always make sure that Henry and I are protected from ticks. So we've got a few tips to keep you and your family safe. Avoid wooded and brushy areas and stick to the center of trails. Wear long pants and long sleeves whenever possible, and wear light-colored clothing so you can easily see when ticks are on you. When outdoors, use repellents that contain DEET. Ticks like to work their way up, so tuck your pants into your socks so they can't get a foothold. Shower as soon as possible to wash off any easy-to-find ticks, and conduct a full-body tick check. And I mean full body. Symptoms of a tick-borne illness can show up in as soon as a few days or as late as a few months. It's important to contact your healthcare provider if you experience any symptoms. Early diagnosis is vital in successfully treating tick-borne illnesses. Well, now that we're ready, let's hit the trail. Come on, Hen! Keep on Cooking is brought to you by Cranston's Wines and More. Pop quiz. What is the quintessential New England summer food? Lobster rolls. I mean, obviously. 
Now you can debate warm or cold, mayonnaise or butter, but there is no question that Nick Raybar makes the best lobster roll around. Let's go get a bite. Hey, hey everybody, welcome to Keep On Cooking, and today we're making the official summer dish of New England, and that is, yep, you guessed it, the lobster roll. There's no question this classic rules the season. The only real question is mayo or butter? Today we're using my personal favorite, and that's butter, so let's get started. While the main attraction might be the lobster, we've got to get going with some melted butter. So I've got some whole salted butter here, and I'm just gonna go into the pan and let that get going. So simple but critical step, you don't wanna let the butter burn, otherwise it's gonna add a little nuttiness to it, which we really don't want on this dish. You wanna pay attention, that way it just melts and stays nice and milky and buttery. So that is nice and melted, and again, not brown. Let's go in with some shallots, because we've gotta lightly cook those. And now we'll go in with some chopped celery. Now these are the only two things that are gonna be cooked here because the lobster is totally pre-cooked. We wanna put that in at the last minute so it doesn't get chewy and overcooked. So we'll just let this go, slow simmer, two, three minutes. And now we're gonna go in with our beautifully cooked lobster. And look at that, come on, that's not even fair. I love to keep the lobster in very large chunks. That's gonna prevent it from getting too dry in the butter. Now we're just gonna mix this up and baste all of that delicious, tender, large chunks pieces of fresh Rhode Island lobster. If you called it a day right there, that's it, you're good, you're done. If you did nothing but lobster and butter, that's it, you're good, you're done. But of course, this is keep on cooking, so we gotta add a few little things. Let us start by putting in some fresh squeezed lemon. That is gonna brighten this butter up add some fabulous acidity and a must have in my opinion with lobster rolls. And now we're gonna put in some fresh herbs. I love fresh herbs. They are just, they wake food up in such special ways, especially when you're using these two. I'm gonna start with some tarragon and then I'm gonna put in some fresh chopped chive, which are two fabulous flavors of the summer. And last, but certainly not least, we're gonna go in with some Old Bay. Old Bay is something I love to cook with. It's a lot of spices in one, but predominantly it's celery salt and salt itself. So notice I didn't add any actual salt to the dish. The Old Bay is gonna take care of that, and so will the natural salt from the lobster. Now it's time for the final stir. Let's put all of that together, and this lobster has soaked in the flavors of the Old Bay, of the butter, of the lemon, of the herbs, of the lobster itself, and it is just oozing with summer aroma. All right, so that's lobster, but it's not a lobster roll without this. This is a griddled brioche bun that I put a little bit of bib lettuce in, and I am just going to load the heck out of these things. Overflowing with buttery, herby, lemony, Old Bay poached lobster, which is a lot to say, but a ton of fun to eat. And since we're not counting the calories today, how about a little bit more butter just to finish it off? And that is our buttered New England lobster roll. Well, I hope you guys make that at home because I'm taking this one to go. Thanks for joining me as always, and until we meet again, you keep on cooking. You know, I knew as children, everyone watched G.I. Joe and stuff like that. For me, I, you know, the first time I watched Love Boat, I was just like mesmerized. And the bartender, that smile, the hospitality piece what really pulled me in. J.A. Patty was started with myself and my partner, uh, Miss Allison Rosario. I started out cooking at home, then I worked in the resorts back home where I was formerly trained. My background in the restaurant is very intensive, but I'm always learning and growing. As an owner, it's a different uh, chapter of my life, and I'm loving it. Every, every bit of it. Oh my God, the, the go-to is the jerk chicken. The jerk chicken bowl over coconut rice. Worldwide known, about Jamaican known for the jerk chicken. And the others, oxtail as well. We have our standard patties, beef, chicken, and veg, uh, made in our special dough and uh, with our different fillings and our sauces. Japati, we really focus on customer hospitality. So we decided to stay in one spot uh, for last year. And it, it seemed to work. A lot of people are a lot more comfortable and coming to the truck and we still take the food to the cars. 
The fact that he has slowed things down in my mind, it's like a reset button. Folks are now engaging with longer. They want to get to know about you. Folks are also curious about your product, being a different, with different cultural background. It's such a huge shift and people just are so supportive. You know, the fact that when you hand something to someone that you make and they walk away happy and come back, it's just very rewarding. And like I said, we're in the people business, you know, so we love it. Rhode Island is very welcoming. I mean, it's a place that's very dear to my heart. People are so honest, so real. If you want to know what's wrong with your food or what you need to improve, I always say you don't need to hire a, a consultant. They'll tell you, you know? And so I love that about Rhode Island food scene and also how sincere the folks are. So when you come here, expect a smile, expect a fresh product, and expect good service. I just want to thank the people of Rhode Island for being so supportive. Thanks to the state of Pawtucket, the health department. Every person has been so gracious, so kind, and I couldn't ask for a better place to be. Well, that's the end of it. Get it? We'll just be here soaking up the sun till next time. See you then. Simply is brought to you by Cranston's Wines and More and Dr. Eric George and Associates.